Good morning. It's Wednesday the 26th of May 2021. It's no good telling you about the weather because it's more or less exactly the same as yesterday so anything can happen we've got no idea. It's no good banging on about that. Uh, I had a, a message from a new friend in Australia saying it's quite similar over there at the moment. It's, it's turned dull and very windy and uh, very nice chap Louis. Thanks for coming on board Louis. I also had some other lovely people as well, far too many to mention but it's keeping me busy, it's keeping me occupied and talking to all these people, you know, chatting with all these people, it's been wonderful. So my plan today, quite easy really, this stretch here is about 20, maybe 22 miles long to walk from Newton Stewart right down to Withorn and the sort of further on than Withorn village or town uh, to actually get to the coast and I know there's a campsite there so I'm quite keen to see if I can get booked onto that. I'm ready for a campsite, charge my batteries up and a uh, bit of a tidy up, I need water, lots of it, all that kind of thing. And so I'm making it quite easy this morning. Uh, I've made a note of all the buses on my little pad that's in here now. I won't be making that mistake again. And as it happens, the bus is from Wigtown, not to be mistaken with Wigton in Cumbria, because when I first put the, uh, when I first put my, into the internet, bus from Newton Stewart to Wigton, it was going to take me about four hours and then I realised it was the one in Cumbria. So it's definitely Wig Town. The sky is just full of clouds. There's absolutely no sign whatsoever of the sun. I've left my van on the same car park I was on yesterday. Um, comfortable sleep, no problem. Uh, there's a toilet right alongside, there's a Sainsbury 50 yards away, so, so it, it's perfect. But I went for a pint last night just for a change, just to get out of the van. I got the edit done and I loaded it up onto my laptop to send off to YouTube and it was going to take about an hour, an hour and a half or something like that. So I just went for a beer and I only had one and I was the only person in the pub. So I had a good chat with the, the, the lady behind the bar who was, uh, I think she was related to the pub owner very knowledgeable and she lived in Wigtown and so she told me an awful lot about it and she told me that you're going to come across a path because it's a very dangerous road with all kinds of uh, U-bends and what have you and I'm on that path now and the first thing I've come across which is a massive bonus is actually a seat because yesterday when I was walking up from Creetown I had to walk like seven miles non-stop before I could actually sit down and just have a rest and that was quite exhausting apart from the fact that I was facing what had turned out to be a really strong wind in the end and it really took it out of me you know walking is one thing but when you're walking against a strong wind it's very wearing shattering actually is probably a better word so it just looks like being another one of those dull miserable May days but um, so back to what I was saying about 22 miles to Wigthorn, well I'm not going to do that in a day and, and even to Wig with Town, uh, sorry, with Thorn Village it's about 18 miles so it just makes sense to sort of cut it in half rather than finishing up in the middle of nowhere thinking oh well I'll do 10 miles well it's better to do it to the towns because you can get a cup of tea or you can get something to eat or and you can have a, you can guarantee that the bus is going to actually stop at that, that particular place and so that's my plan and, and that is going to carry on I guess all the way up the coast of Scotland. But I'm feeling good, my legs are fine, I've, I've only been walking maybe for about three quarters of an hour and uh, I'm feeling good. It's quite cool actually, it's only about eight degrees but it's actually warmer out here than it was in my van. It was really cold last night and everything, as soon as you put the, as soon as you put the kettle on and get the frying pan on and make my usual sort of hundred and well thousand fifty calorie breakfast which I have every single day it looks more or less exactly the same every day it's just basically three sausages about five rashes of bacon uh, two eggs and some chopped tomatoes and it's absolutely gorgeous and it goes down well and that's what that's my recipe for success 
I insist on having a big breakfast. It's a waste of time walking on an empty stomach, believe me. I'm going to give my feet another pamper tonight and uh, bathe them in hot water and with some Listerine in it, which is a great top tip, I've told you before. It brings them up like brand new, gets rid of all the bits in your toenails and, and if you're going to clip your toenails, because they've just been in water for about half an hour, they cook very easy. So with all of that, I'll be on my way and uh, I know I mentioned Ralph to, and, and a lot of people thinking, who is this Ralph character that you keep talking about? Well, he's a Welshman and he walked with me on maybe 20 days or different days all over the country uh, in 2018 and 19. We, we walked uh, along the Cornwall coast up towards Plymouth and then later we moved we walked the White Cliffs of Dover and then later than that uh, we walked the Minehead to uh, Ilfracum on the uh, southwest coastal path in Devon and he came up to Scotland on a couple of occasions and we walked up around Aberdeen and Fraserburgh and then he came at the end where we walked uh, from Wick to John O'Groats, the finishing part. And I'm looking forward to getting back there actually. And I've got lots of friends up there who I speak to, especially Dave Donders. And there's also, um, I'm trying to think, I did get mixed up with whether it was a man or a woman. It's, it's a woman and it's Chris. And you live up at Port Glasgow. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing you, Chris. And any friend of Ros Z. Smith in New York is a friend of mine and his, his mom, the Callie, and all those people. And uh, lovely to be in touch with you and glad that you're watching and thank you very much. So, if Ralph was here, he would say, in a Welsh accent, I'm not very good at a Welsh accent, he would say, Here we go. But seeing as we're in Scotland, I'm going to stick with See you, Jimmy! I've just seen um, an alternative route actually which takes me off this road um, but I've made the decision to stick on the road which might seem strange to you but all I'm going to be doing is walking along the banks of the River Cree and it's, it's not a very exciting river to be honest and plus the fact I wouldn't see anything else other than the path um, it's not going to save me it's not going to save me any miles. The road here is quite a wide road. There's not very much traffic. It's not like yesterday where I was walking on like the A75 or was it the 76? It's one or the other. And so I'd miss out on seeing all this lovely scenery 
it will be the, more or less the same scenery all of the way whereas up here I'm on much higher ground and uh, I can see the sun coming up in the uh, in the far distance so I think for your benefit and I say that with all respect I'm gonna stick with walking on the road so you can get such wonderful scenery as an example like this It's around about 10.15 now and I've just checked my Fitbit and I've walked 7,000 steps which is about roughly three and a half miles so you could say I'm almost halfway there. This is a, a long straight road it's not that busy uh, you've got to be careful you know this you, you get you get fast moving traffic as always and so you've got it you've just got to watch your step a little bit but I've got I've got pretty good at it now I, I can read the situation a lot better and also it's not like yesterday where where it was 40 ton trucks this is relatively light traffic with the occasional truck but um, there's with it being such a long straight road they've got plenty of vision and there's not many twists and turns so it's not dangerous I wouldn't say so anyway but just to explain I did prefer I did prefer to come this way rather than that cycle track because it just would have been a cycle track and nothing else and um, I couldn't possibly make a 30 minute film of a cycle track going through forests and stuff like that. Be a little bit like when I was down at Newborough Beach in Anglesey where there must have been millions and millions of pine trees and there was a walk around it actually and it wasn't part of the coastal path but um, I didn't fancy that so I just headed straight for the beach plus the fact that the uh, the forest wasn't on the coastal path anyway so that seemed a bit, a bit of a waste of time I forgot to mention actually when I was talking about that pub I went into last night um, the, the lady said well nobody ever comes in on a Tuesday night so I said well you know, I was the only person there. She said, I, I said, well, why don't you close then? So she says, well, the problem if you start closing is that people will stop coming at all the times. You know, if you come in at lunchtime, there's quite a few people in. And some people did come in six o'clock-ish and they'd gone by seven because I didn't get there till eight. But a chap wandered in from Leeds and I got talking to him and a very, very lively sort of guy. And... Uh, we were reminiscing about nights out in Leeds in the early 90s when we were both like maniac clubbers and we were talking about all the clubs we used to go to and it did bring back some memories you know like back to basics and uh, all of those sort of places vague and one or two of the typical sort of early 90s clubs and you'd just be dancing all night and what fantastic memories it we brought back from each other and we were talking about the Leeds Liverpool Canal because I walked that last year and he was telling me quite a lot of things about Leeds and how it's changed but he much prefers it up here and he's got he's got like a, a gardening business a landscaping business and he's telling me that all of his customers are English 
there's, he hasn't got any Scottish customers. They're all, and most of them are from Yorkshire. Now, isn't that strange? And uh, he's making a living, he's doing all right. And, uh, you know, we just had a beer and a chat and I didn't get his name. I didn't get the name of the landlady either, but I hope they do contact me because they're lovely people. And I might even consider going back and seeing if there's any livelier on a Wednesday night tonight. I did enjoy getting out of the van just for an hour, just going down to the pub and just having one pint. And I popped down to the co-op and bought all bits and pieces that I needed for today, you know. And uh, it was great, just that, even just that hour. So, I'm doing fine. I'm dead happy with this and I'll see you later.
was telling I was telling my people who watch me that I went to the pub last night and, and I was the only customer for a while and this is Rachel who was the barmaid I was telling him how we had a, a nice chat and then this chap from Leeds came in Kenny I think his name Kenny. is Kenny Yep. Yeah, and we was chatting away. Fancy your lips. How many jobs have you got then? I've got two. You've this got is two. my main job. <laughs> right, so you're off back to the pub tonight? Nope, I only do it once a week just to help out. It's my mother-in-law that runs the pub, so... Oh, well, what a coincidence. I that, know, a small world. That is incredible, isn't it? Yeah. I missed the 12.15 bus. I've got to wait now until the 2 o'clock, but that gives me plenty of time for tea, tea. and all the rest of it. And have a look around the bookshops. Yes, yeah, so what I'm going to do, yeah. yeah. Uh, you yeah. Know, I, until I found out the times of the buses, then I could be sure I've got time for tea. tea and, 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 and I wander around the bookshops. Yes, yeah, yeah. and I'll be bringing my van up here later. <laughs> nice to meet you again, I Rachel. Do. Okay, what a coincidence. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. Well, I've been sat here in the sun for 20 minutes. How fantastic it is to actually see the sun shining and uh, after all that walk I didn't see the sun once, now it's gorgeous and my mind's just thinking well by the time I get back to the van, having caught the two o'clock bus I'll be back for quarter past and there should be some life in my battery now which means I can make a, a much better start, I won't have to tick the engine over again and I can get the job done. It's been a good walk, I thoroughly enjoyed it and uh, look forward to tomorrow. I'm very impressed with this place. Wick town, it's lovely, absolutely fantastic. It reminds me of some of the Yorkshire towns like Thirsk and North Allerton, those kind of places. But what a coincidence that I bumped into the girl who I was talking to in the pub last night, who was the, the barmaid. And she's all, she also has a job in this cafe that I've just been in. And uh, <laughs> that's, an, that's an amazing coincidence because I was just going to say to her, I want to do a bit of video work and, and uh, I'm walking Britain. She says, I know, I met you last night. <laughs> and then she took her face mask off and, and that was it, Rachel the caller. What a lovely girl. And uh, it's been a good walk and a good day and I feel great. And I've got all my rhythm back now. I'm walking well. Got a little bit tired towards the end because it's more or less a non-stop walk and you're still battling with traffic when you road walking and then I've done quite a lot of video work today but it's been a great success. So that's the end of the film and I'll be starting off from here tomorrow and I'll speak to you then. Bye now.